Welcome back. So today I'm going to teach you how to create new quizzes in Canvas. And so to begin, you are going to click on quizzes in the course that you're in. It could be your sandbox, it could be your official course, whichever one. Today I'm in my sandbox to play around. So then I'm going to click up here, add quiz. And you'll automatically be prompted, do you want a classic quiz or a new quiz? I will say, classic quizzes, as of July 2021, they will be no more. And so if you do have any classic quizzes that you'd like to keep, I do suggest that you migrate them over to new quizzes. How do you do that? You'll click a, you'll find a published quiz, which is, I'll have a green check here. So I have my published classic quiz. Now I'm going to go to these three dots and I'm going to migrate it. And so you see that it's in progress and it's going to take that quiz and turn it from a classic into a new quiz. And so you'll see there's my quiz. It is not published. And so I'm going to want to go in and edit that to make any changes that I want before I publish it. And I'll be able to keep that quiz forever and ever because it is a new quiz. Now, back to the quiz creation. So you'll click Add Quiz. You're going to go for a new quiz and submit. And so here you'll see I'm going to give my quiz a title. I'm going to make it um, about the states. All right. And so you'll see in here pre-populated, you'll see that I have my points where I want to add it. I want to put it with my assignments. All right. And so whenever you make a quiz in your actual course, you'll want to think more about, do I want this to count towards the final grade or not? And so moving down, um, I have the, I have it set. You can make it unlimited or you can limit the number of attempts. Maybe you want to give them multiple tries at this. And again, choose if you want this to be linked to PowerSchool or your um, school's grading system. I don't because, again, I'm in my sandbox. So who's going to get graded? Nobody. There's nobody here but me. So I can come down here and choose who do I want to assign this to. I can assign this to everyone. I can assign this to, if I had people in my course, I could assign it to individual students or I can just assign it to um, my course. And so right now, I'm going to assign it to my practice course, which is my sandbox. When is it due? Um, today. And when is it available? Today. When does it last until? Tomorrow. And now I'm going to save my progress so far. Now I'm not finished. I'm just getting the details of the quiz. So now you'll see that I'm in a session that lets me build my quiz. So I have my title, all about the states, and you can add instructions here. And then this toolbar, after I click this, you'll see this is exactly the same. And so if you need, depending on the level of your kids, what they need, you can include a video, or if you wanted to include um, a photograph here, any type of media you want to add, um, you can add that in here to as you're giving your directions. One idea is to put your Bitmoji in and then include audio so that that way it's like your Bitmoji is talking and giving directions. That's just an idea. And so um, you'll write your directions and then you'll come down and then this is where you will be in the act, begin the creation of the quiz. Now, I can make a question one by one and or I can go to my item bank. I'm going to show you both ways. Now, I'm not going to go over the same question styles that are in the classic quizzes. If you want to see those, definitely check out the classic quizzes video and question bank videos. For today's tutorial, I'm only going to go over the brand new question types that are in new quizzes. And so that is the hotspot, categorization, and ordering. Those are the three new types of um, questions that I want to teach you about. And so I already actually, I've actually created some of these already. So in my item bank or with classic quizzes, it's called a question bank. So I'll click here and I'm going to go down to my folder um, state capitals. And so in here I can choose, do I want to send all of my questions that I wrote? Do I want all of these to go to my test or do I want to pick the ones that I want, like select them one by one. I'm going to um, pick one of each style of the new question. So ordering, 
I'll get that one. Um, categorization, I'll pick that one. And then let's do hotspot. I'll click that one as well. And now I'm done for now. So I'm going to click the X. And I want to show you quickly what do these new questions look like. And then I'll teach you how to build them. So I'm going to preview. You'll see a purple bar down here. This means that I'm in student view. And so as a student, this is what I'm going to see. Now, hotspot, this is what it looks like. Which state's capital is Charleston? So here's my image. I'm actually going to go somewhere on here and I'm going to click the state or the spot, the hotspot on which capital is Charleston. So I'm going to click right in there because I know the capital of West Virginia is Charleston. Now I'm going to continue. Sort the states based on their region, okay? So this is that categorization topic. And so I'm just going to, as a student, I'm going to look through and I'm going to put these where they go. All right. And so I'm just going to keep on going. And then, and then in the directions, you can also tell your students if, hey, you don't have to use all of them. There are going to be two remaining. And so um, use all of them except two. And you'll see what I mean by that a little bit later. All right. And then this one is the organization. And so I'm just going to put these in order. Order the states from greatest to least by their population. So the top highest population down here, lowest population. And so I'm just pulling these and moving them around. And as a student, when I think I'm done, I'll hit submit. And am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'm a genius. And I like this right here. It auto grades it. So that makes it faster for me. And wow, look at that. I got a 33% on this. So now as a student, I can look in and this is what my answer is. And if you see here, the hot spot, if I were to click, click anywhere inside that circle, I would have gotten the correct answer. Moving down, this is just what it looks like, my correct versus my incorrect answers. And then as well down here, you can see that I ordered literally everything wrong because I did not take my time. And now as a student, I can reflect on this, these responses and do better next time. But I'm gonna go out of the preview now and show you how do you actually create those questions. And so I'm going to press the plus sign right here. And I could have clicked any of those plus signs. I could have clicked any of them. Okay, so plus sign. And then I'm going to add first a hotspot. And so I'm going to give that question a title. This this topic is going to be state capitals, um, question stem, wait, um, let's word it this way, and now for the new quizzes or for the hotspots, you want to go ahead and have your photos ready um beforehand so that that way you can click because there's not really an option to go on and do a google search for some of these images so um have them ready beforehand all right now you can click if you want to do a square you can click if you want to do an oval or a polygon polygon is kind of tricky but i'm going to do a circle and then i'm going to go down here and then if they click anywhere inside this circle it'll be the correct answer. And uh, to answer, I know a lot of people have this question, can I have my students click more than one hotspot? No, you cannot. You're gonna have to have multiple um, images there. So Canvas is working on that because a lot of people have been requesting it. Okay, so now I'm done. And so I'm going to, I don't need a calculator. I'm looking at the state capitals, so I don't really need that right now. Now I to tell how many points I want it to be, okay? And so for this section here, what I want to do, I'm gonna click done, because I'm done with that question. But before I do that, I wanna add it to my bank. And I'm gonna add that to an existing bank, which is gonna be called my state capitals. And remember earlier how I went to the item bank and I clicked and I just chose my questions? This is how this question is now going to be in that bank. And so that's going to help me as I create future quizzes because now I already have everything um, saved and I can reuse them however many times I want to. Okay. 
for the next question, I'm going to press the plus button. I'm going to go up to categorization. Um, for this type of question, you want to think about what categories am I going to be sorting my items in. And so for me, my topic today is states. And so I want to think about um, regions. So this one's going to be about regions. Oops. Regions, regions of the U.S. So I'm going to say sort all right and I'm gonna go this is gonna be the Midwest and this one is going to be the mm, Southeast and then here I am going to type in some state names. So, and I'm literally typing out states that come to my head. I'm not, this isn't um, pre planned. So, this is on the spot. All right. Let's go with Nevada, Rhode Island. Let's go with um, New York. And then here, let's put in. West Virginia, let's put in Vermont, and then let's get Georgia. And then down here is distractor options. So you can choose to or not to put in distractors. And so, but we do want to make it clear in the beginning in your directions that, hey, by the way, um, you're not going to use all of the answers. So that way they know. Otherwise, the kids are going to try to sort every single thing. And if it doesn't fit into a category, they're going to make it fit into the category. So just be mindful when you're putting in distractor items. Um, and you can use those or not, completely your choice. I'm not going to use them. All right. And so if I need a calculator, cool, but I don't. So item banking, always, I'm telling you, bank your stuff because that's going to help you later on when you're creating quizzes, all right? So I'm going to add this to the bank. I'm going to put it under state capitals, existing item bank. I can choose if I want shapes or state capitals. And I'm going to add that in right now. The last question type that I'm going to go over is, you guessed it, ordering because that's the other new question type. So, um, I'm gonna put A, B, C, order, because that's one type of ordering. We can alphabetize the states. Um, so let's see. Um, put the states in A, B, C, order and these are questions that are coming to my head obviously you are going to plan yours out way way more detailed than mine especially after this tutorial when you have time to play around with it all right so i'm just going to put a and z and so the states we're going to go with um alabama california let's go with Wyoming, how about that, and Idaho, there we go. So we're gonna use those, and if I wanna add more, I can add more, but for these purposes, I'm, I'm happy with just my little four. So don't forget, item banking, I'm gonna add this to my bank, and I'm gonna put it in that category with state capitals, and actually, I need to go back in and rename that question bank, because as you see, some of the questions, they're not all related to state capitals. So I'm going to rename that later on. But anyway, for now, I think I'm good. Um, I like the questions. So now that I added these questions in, I'm all the way at the bottom of my page. I'm going to go all the way up to the top and preview this, see if I like what it looks like. And remember, I'm going into student view. And so now I can see exactly what my students are going to see. And then at the bottom here, you'll see my brand new questions, states in ABC order, and then I can um, order these as well based on their categories. So I'm going to exit that preview, and I am now done with my quiz. So that was the actual creation of the quiz. And so now I can go into my settings, 
And here I decide, do I want to shuffle the questions? Yes, I do. Do I want to shuffle the answers? Oh, yeah, because that way if two kids are beside each other, they're not going to be able to copy because you're going to have not only different questions, but different answers as well. They're going to be in a different order. One question at a time. Yeah. This is really helpful because if you if you don't click one question at a time, um, it's just it's all there for you. It's all there and it's easily it's easy for um, people to get overwhelmed. So if you have just one question at a time, it's very nice, neat and it's organized and I can focus all my brain energy on this one section instead of scrolling and getting overwhelmed. Now, if you want to, you can um, require an access code or put a time limit all of these are different options for you to explore on your own. Now, reports. This tells me after my kids take the test, I can come here. It'll show me all the data from those um, from the reports. So that has, lets me, as a teacher, um, be able to see what are the trends in my class. How can I analyze this? And what do I need to teach? And what do I need to reteach? And who needs to be enriched? Now, at the last so what I can do is um, I can moderate this and so whenever you do have your student data you will see that there are a lot of people's names down here and I know it's hard but just imagine with me for a quick moment that I actually have a kid in my class but there is a way for you to um, set accommodations for those kids and so that means if you want to give them extra time if you need to let them have multiple attempts there are ways for you to do the accommodations um you would see that if i had kids in my class which i don't but um the option is there if you need that so i'm going to return now and you'll see that this is my quiz i think it's a pretty good quiz so i'm going to publish it and it is live so now when my imaginary kids log in to take the test Boom, there it is, it is ready to go. So, if you like this video, if it helped you learn something today, please click like and share it with your teaching buddies. As always, subscribe so that that way you're always in the loop and you can watch the very next tutorial.